But right, come on, Brighton Spurs, 3 2. Um, what? Um, <laughs> how? Well, how? Honest, honestly, I thought they were phenomenal the first half. Phenomenal. I mean, if it would have been five, yeah. and it could have been more than five, yeah. but I think if it had been five, everybody would have said, well, what a, an amazing first half of football. They could have had three in the first four or five minutes, four or five minutes. to be honest with you. But if you're Big Ange, you cannot comprehend that. The game is so comfortable at 2-0. And actually, when the half-time whistle goes, you, you need that to be the full-time whistle because you know that you have done everything. And if a moment comes, as it did within a minute or two minutes of that restart, the whole world implodes and momentum's a thing that often coaches and managers talk about in football. You can't see it, you can't smell it, and in a millisecond, it's gone. It's gone yeah. 2-1, and from that moment on, that Spurs team was unrecognisable. And he stood there on the side of the field, cannot do anything about it, and you're looking at the football gods saying, what, how, why? I think, I think they've gotten at half-time Brighton. Buzzing, it's only 2 0. Absolutely. Genuinely, buzzing, it's yeah, only yeah. 2 0. And if they can use that as motivation to come out in the second half and do something, then fair dues to them because it could have been five or what six. Do you genuinely. Act, when that happens, fuzzy to a team, when that happens, you've said in the past, I think, I can't remember what you were telling me about once, but when that onslaught comes the other way and you said you've almost looked at a player and you've seen straight through him, yeah. like glazed eyes and stuff. If you're on a pitch and something like that's happening, what do you, what's happening here? Do you need that captain to grab someone by the scruff of neck, two or three senior players, leaders? Because how do you stop that? Yeah, it's hard. it's hard in the game. It's really, really hard during the game whilst it's going on. The, the best time for it to happen is normally at a half-time where everybody can sit down and the manager can just be like, wow, reset, lads, reset. That was It literally can't get any worse. It can't get any worse. And it just goes to show that... 2-0 is such a it's such a weird scoreline, isn't it? It's such a weird scoreline, especially going in at half time 2-0, you've been so dominant. Brighton, the only crumb of kind of confidence they can grab from that is if they do get that first goal and an early first goal as well in the second half, then they can go all of a sudden, wow, we were we should be 5-0 down, and incredibly, we're only one goal behind. And 18 minutes later, they're three two up. It's yeah, it was phenomenal. It was a massive implosion from Spurs, but it just goes to show that when you're 2-0 up, that next goal is so important. Because yeah. if you get the third, dead. But if you go and concede one, 2-1, two, one, you've got a chance. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. no. Mate, mate I, like, you, you, try and, you, you try and compute all this oh. now. And that's what Big Angela had been like, stood there on the side. Of, and that's so hard as a manager. Because he's seen it all happen in front of his eyes. And yes, as a manager, you can try and tweak it tactically. Very difficult as the game's going on. You can make substitutions, try and slow it down. I mean, it's at that point, I think, when they concede that goal. But it's so quick after half-time. You actually want a tactical foul and get the physios on and just grab two minutes. But he wouldn't have seen his team thinking, like, even with that goal, we're going to implode. But it was such a mental capitulation. I mean, I think you obviously look back at these games and you analyse them post-defeat. And yes, there was some woeful, woeful defending. But it's in here. Mentally, yeah, they were shot. Edge, yeah. And that's very difficult to have an impact as a manager on that team because as that game's rolling in that second half, he's just watching and he's thinking, wow, wow, we. But I think the only crumb of comfort he can have is that if they could do anything with Werner, and I know Johnson's got six in six here, and it says on the stats, first player since Kane. But he could have had an hat-trick if Werner could have teed him up slightly better or would have some confidence on his own to oh, God, take a shot yeah. on. I think, you know, <clears throat> we talked, have the miss Kane, for sure you're going to miss his goals. But on a day like that, that's when you do miss him. And Solanke's obviously got his international call-up now. Well-merited, but he's not that out-and-out -out goal scorer that you need to get that killer in. He's, he's not, but do you know what? With the Solanke signing, you watch him yesterday and I, I think the goals will come. I genuinely think yeah. the goals will come for him. But he does have some some similarities to Kane. Like the way sometimes he'll drop a little mate, bit mate, deeper. The pass for the, the first goal. And his passing yeah, oh, it's, it is it's, really yeah, good. His yeah. link-up play. But you'd have never said that, would you? So would we have talked about that at Bournemouth, even though we probably played very, very similarly, but because he'd have been a little bit more last line 
And like that's the like centre forward coming off half turn playing. Mm. I mean that foot pass what were amazing. Probably didn't get the credit he deserved for it because the, the, the game drifts away and they get beat. But yeah, no, I think I think Ange will make him a better player and that will be good for him. I think from from Brian's perspective, uh, massive questions we've got to be asked in that first half about what went wrong and how you can start a game so poorly, especially yeah. at home as well. Um Especially after Chelsea as well, but exactly, yeah, exactly. But I think when you have got some real talent in the team and some leaders as well, the fact you can get in half time and regroup and reassess everything and come out with a different game plan second half, I think that does speak volumes for Brighton. Um, Min- M- Mitoma was just what a player. And what can they about? Just what a player. Every year yeah. they've got, they've got so two or three many, yeah. that you've never heard of yeah. that come in and, and just tear it up. Into Rut- uh, Welbeck, obviously, Danny Welbeck's having like a proper little kind of like re kind of emergence of himself. He's just showing everybody what he's. It's just that he's not injured, genuinely. It's just the fact that he's not injured and he's out on the pitch, um, and that's that's all it is, really. Is that it, Belaber looks phenomenal? Something special. Phenomenal. Top half finish for Brighton this season for sure. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a conveyor belt of players and ultimately very, very good managers, isn't it? Because yeah. he, he changes um, <clears throat> the fullback at half time and would have had a tough, <laughs> tough first half. But like the start. Even as a manager, though, you need things to fall in your lap. Yep. And for whatever he's done, said and whatever, survival mode to get in at half-time. Yeah. But he knows the done, finished. But yet, you get that early goal and... Uh, all bets are off. All bets before, are we, off. before we move on to Villa United, I, I don't like these... When Ange, when they lose, this no eye contact to the interviewer, looking down diagonally on the floor. If I was a Spurs fan, I wouldn't particularly like it. I understand they've lost, he's upset, but show a bit more front. What do you think? I think his words do, the the front talk. He, he don't mince his words. I, it doesn't bother me one little bit because it's what comes out of his mouth and you can see that he is, he's seething inside. Like, he, he is absolutely fuming and raging. I think he's doing as well as he can do to not punch the interviewer in the face. <laughs> yeah, it's that, a I do. No, that's, that, that's, that, that, that's what I thought yeah. because, like... He's been in the game a long time. He'll have known for all that dominance how vulnerable they were because a goal does change everything. And that's why they've been seething when Johnson fires one over minutes into injury time for staff because he knows if that goes in, it's finished. It's finished. The law of averages are telling you. One goal doesn't affect you at that point. Yeah, You're still too clear and everything had stayed the same. But they missed so many easy chances. And, I, and I'm like, Ben, I thought he were absolutely raging and he'd got all on just to utter a few... Syllables because he wouldn't he just, even look at the reporter. Oh, would he? No, he's gone. His head's but, gone. But like, Ed's, Ed's yeah. lost. Yeah, Ed's Ed's three or four minutes after the game, you know, oh, whatever it is, God, and yeah. someone goes, oh, "Yeah, what do you think of that then?" Um, uh, and quickly before we do actually talk about Villa Man United, which oh God, well, how talk about underwhelming? Um, Madison's goal, Verbruggen. What's he doing, mate? Mate, I think for for all that we're talking, Tottenham should have been out of sight. They were lucky to be two 0 up. Um, yeah, we can argue it goes through loads of bodies and that, but you'll do training when you, it's passing mannequins and legs all the time. He basically just took his eye off took the ball. Off it, yeah. it was too easy. He thought it was an absolute doddle. Didn't really. He just wanted us all to see Madison's celebration. Get the camera <coughs> here, come here. But this, but even that though, like, like and said about this a few months ago, didn't he? He said, "I don't want to see my players doing these silly." Do you remember when he had that little bit of an altercation with Mope and Mope was taking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you make a rod for your own back. Yeah, yeah and don't go f- doing that sort and of don't stuff. Don't celebrate a goal like that. That's you know, what I'm yeah, a little you're, happy, you're happy you've scored, but like the goal is thrown in. Don't be going. Come on, mate. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna. I'm bad. So bad. I was at the NFL yesterday. What's in their celebrations? Oh, they're good. Oh my God. <laughs> God. They celebrate everything. Everything. Ran out on the pitch. Let's celebrate. <laughs> it's unbelievable. All right, here's one for you, Fozzy. Has has Ten Hag save himself for another? couple of weeks with that draw at Villa Park. Yes, he has. I think if they'd have lost this game, he would have been gone. Um, the international break is not a, f- um, a friend of managers in trouble, is what it goes like normally, isn't it? So there'll be a couple going into this international break kind of fearing for their jobs a little bit. Probably Gary O'Neill at Wolves a little Glasner. bit. Glasner. Um, Glasner. I think Ten Hag will uh, be able to have a few sleepless nights as well. Um, but yeah, if they'd have lost... Gone, but I think what this does is it probably does buy in the next mm, three, four weeks, maybe. Um, but if they're, they're they're literally a, a bad result away from him getting the job. It was a, it was a poor game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a I very mean, poor game. What? It it were, it were poor. I think Villa's euphoria from the Champions League game in the week is naturally going to take some yeah. steam <clears throat> out of them. 
it became a tactical battle. But like United played not to get beat, didn't yeah. they? You know what I mean? And that can't be Man United. We've got here on the stats, stats Ten Hag, back-to-back worst Premier League starts. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and you're saying he might be safe. And, and I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Because that's just, it can't be Man United. You can't start two seasons like that yeah. and think you're going to be safe. Well, well mean, last season, last season, nine points after seven games, and it was a massive thing of, oh, my God, it's the worst. Alex Ferguson would be looking at this going, what a disgrace. And he's gone this year, yeah, I'll do I'll do that by a point. So he's only got eight points this, this year the in plan, seven games. The plan of this, you know, this whole United master plan, it's bigger than losing a game, drawing a game, isn't it? So... I, I think they've made for a rod for their own back the fact that they kept him after they won the FA Cup final because now, if they're to get rid of him, it, it looks really bad on all these. Barada, Ashworth, Wilcox, yeah. Brailsford. Yeah, it looks got a so it, yeah. bad on yeah, all of them, it. doesn't it? Yeah, and they, out of that panel you've just described, I think he's obviously had a majority vote somewhere to, to keep him in the role. Yeah. But let's be honest, it... it if you're a Man United fan, and I see that post-match interview, and yes, he's fighting for his job, but he's saying you can see the team's improvement. You can see what would... No, I can't. No, can't. And I don't see any improvement. And players he's brought into that team, who should be his men, he's not starting. The body language of the team. Rashford, I mean, just seems like a lost soul. I don't think he'd smile if he celebrated a goal, if he'd got a hat-trick, if they'd have won 10 nil. There's a lot of things that I don't think are right. It's not even like a lost soul or weight on a shot. For me, it's it's not being a team player. He's not being a team player. So there was a chance, we spoke about it earlier, didn't we? There was a chance where he tried to loop one over the defender for Hoyland to run onto. He he hit it too far. That happens, yeah. But as a player, you normally just go, sorry, mate, or sorry, lad, sorry for... He didn't. He just quickly turned his back, walked away, sort of like trudged off with no expression on his face. I'm thinking, just at least say you're sorry. But then when he got... Brought off, which he was very lucky that he actually got the chance to be brought off because it should have been a red card, by the way, and it would have been the most ridiculous, almost looking for it red card. It's genuinely, it was awful. But when he's walking off the pitch, no expression on his face whatsoever. The the lad that came off with him at the same time, he's giving high fives to the players that are coming on the pitch like a G and I'm up. Come on then, let's go, let's go. Rashford walks off a little, yeah, touch, walks off. And, and people notice that, don't they? The a, whole club will know that. Be a team player. Get behind the lads that are coming on the pitch. You should want them to do well and want them to try and win the game for Manchester United. Um, going back to the game quickly, though, Villa, if I, if I had to pick 11 players on that pitch who I think were the best players or before the game, during the game, after, you'd probably pick most Aston Villa players, wouldn't you? Yeah. They just look like a better team, better club, better everything. If you were to do a combined 11 now, it's Villa players. You're not getting... Uh, there's going to be, what, a one or two? <laughs> Ma- maybe, but look, Johnny Evans becomes man of the match yeah. for Man United and, and was phenomenal. But, like, he's come back to the club having left for a good number of years. Of course, he's the Man United mantra, knows what's required. But he's basically keeping Ten Hag in a job. Yeah. Johnny Evans, phenomenal performance, but it has to be better than that, doesn't it? If you're Man United, <laughs> it has to be better. The thing is, right, you've got... Um, you've got Martinez, you've got um, De Ligt, you've got all these expensive players on the bench. But when it comes to it and the chips are down and you need players to dig in, which happens quite a lot in the Premier League, who does he revert to? Harry Maguire and Johnny Evans. You want the solid boys, the solid citizens you, you, you that know you know will get. turn up and give you 7 out of 10 every single but day. But I, th- I think they've been very fortunate to get through that game because if Rashford would have been sent off, which he should have been sent off, yeah. it was petulance, as you said, got booked two minutes later... You, if you're a winger going back to tackle the opposition winger and he goes past you and you just flick him with your right leg, anywhere on the field, that is a yellow card. How the ref's not done it, I've got no idea. Yeah. But if you're then the Man United manager, what that shows the rest of the team, it's just nonsense. Yeah. And yes, he took him off, but it didn't affect uh, Rashford. He just walks off, has his moan up, not interested really, just wants to get back on the bus and get up to Manchester. And, and that's a... I guess it's a bit of a disappointing result for Villa, really. Yeah, it is. On the back of, yeah, obviously, is, yeah. incredible yeah. result in yeah. the week against Bayern Munich and the momentum they've got. Is this kind of like, you know, that you talk about that European hangover. Villa played on Wednesday, United played on Thursday. Fozzie, is this just a bit of adjustment for playing Champions League? Yeah, I think? I think so. I think it's probably, I think the, the whole 
thing that it's it's the first Champions League game under yeah. the lights at Aston Villa. Uh, Bayern Munich, fantastic win, massive performance from absolutely everybody involved in the football club. It does. It's going to sort of take a, a bit emotionally out of you. Um, but I thought Villa were probably the better team in the game. Um, I think if they were a bit sharper around the box, there were a load of times where they got the ball in real good positions around the 18-yard box, and you could just see that it just wasn't quite clicking. It wasn't quick enough, sharp enough. The little interplay, one uh, one touch, two touches, wasn't quite there. And if it would have been there, they could have put two or three past them. Man United had a couple of chances. Rashford obviously tested uh, Martinez a couple of times. I think Bruno hit the crossbar, didn't he, late on as well. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was a it was a bit of a nothing game really. It looked like two tired teams playing against each other, not to not to lose. Hello, big boy, you know, big boy, young know. Yeah. And then so another stat, quite a damning stat. This is Man United's lowest tally in their opening seven matches of a league season since eighty nine ninety season. <laughs> oh gosh. But it, it can only end one way that for, for yeah. me, whether he survives this period It's I, irrelevant, isn't it's it? It's irrelevant. The the body language and everything with the players you can see this is only ending one way. And as you said earlier, the FA Cup somehow saved them. But if you'd have been watching day in, day out, you should have seen beyond that 90 minutes yeah. and that win. Uh, Tom Oak, your boys, Wolves, um, another another Monday morning, another um, loss for the boys in Orange. Yeah, it's. I think every week I've been saying... We'll be all right. We're playing well. Like we're playing well. Even Slot came out last week and saying how brilliant it was. And going into an international defeat, if it would have been another good performance and just got nicked, I'd have probably been saying the same again. Yeah. But we got absolutely battered. Battered. Um, hey, you didn't concede a goal in the first minute. Fair play to you. Come on, <laughs> fair good. play to you. Fair it's play good. to you. Good. Yeah, it was in the first minute and a half, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, second minute that counts. Huh? What do you make of this? What I was chatting to my brother-in-law at the weekend, and he was saying like. He's got to go, he's got to go, O'Neill. And I'm like, just get through these. Like, managers like Gary O'Neill don't grow on trees. No. They don't. He's no, a no, good no. young manager. No, yeah, sure. And if you get rid, who's going to come in? But quickly, quickly before you answer that, right? So just look at the fixtures they've had so far, yeah? <laughs> Liverpool, Villa, Newcastle, Chelsea, Arsenal, Forrester who are flying all season, Brentford who can do that to anybody. And then their next two fixtures are Brighton and Man City. That is about as tough a start as you're going to get, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, and and it's now whether the ownership can see beyond that block of fixtures yeah. because they're two tough fixtures, City, Brighton, next two yeah. for sure. And obviously, you've alluded to the fact that international breaks it's a graveyard for football managers. And I think Wolves, without the points, you can't say they've been excellent, but they'd been very close in the majority of the games. But I think Gary, and he said in his interview, to be fair to him, that's, a, I think, the worst performance he's yeah. ever had as a coach. Yeah, was, With any team, he, he was fuming. He was absolutely fuming. Um, that's the problem. Yeah. That, uh, and that's, that's, that's a worry. I still think they will be OK because I think the three teams who got promoted I'll, will struggle. But if you see that then after nine games, if they get beat the next two, they're on one point. Oof. It's a long way back, and you Panic know what I want to talk about: the points to games ratio. <laughs> yeah, you, they're not going to win three no. games on the spin to get level. You, it's very rare you get a couple. To be fair, so it's going to take a lot of time to like get 10, 12, 14, 15 games and get your points up even to double figures. Well, if they lose their next two games, twenty-seven games left, they that you're talking one and a half points a game they need to get safe for the season. Yeah. And it's a, it's a big ask, yeah? It's the stats, and, and that's where in the Premier League, obviously, it used to be 40 points. Then we talk about 38. Yeah, it's it's probably 35, 35 36 yeah, it's now. It is, yeah. But the, the, the reality is, it's very hard when you're a club and you've played 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever the number of games, and you, you're trying so hard to get up to that point-per-game ratio. That's then the problem for them. And whoever the couple of games are post-City and Brighton, into the next break will will define whether he's there or not. Wolves will just have to beat Brighton and City then. It's easy, lads. It's Absolutely easy. Noddle. But what about what about Brentford though? Again. Brilliant. Mate, I think Thomas Frank, I, I've alluded to the fact and everybody's now saying he's one of the best managers in the league for sure. But look, Brentford have been brought bought on this model and doing whatever they're doing and they, they probably didn't think Thomas Frank were going to be as sexy a coach as he's been. But let's have it right. A minute and 16 seconds. It's the centre-half who scores the goal. 
They lost the toying cost, so they didn't have possession of the ball. They've won the cost. <laughs> he said toying cost. Coin toss. Toying cost. And I didn't even have enough. I be- didn't spot that. I didn't even have a beer yesterday. Toying cost. Anyway, toying cost. So they lost that, but yet they get the ball back. They play. The centre half didn't lump it forward. Yeah. He steps in, plays a couple of one twos. And thinks, I tell you what, I know what's going to happen when we've played as one twos and it goes wide. I'm going to get it. He's going to cross that. Incredible. So instead of me running here thinking, now nah, I've got 80 yards to go back, I know where our philosophy is. I've played, played it wide. If I run in the box, he's going to cross it. Yeah. And do you know what? I can edit. it. Boom, 1 0. Minute 16 seconds. But the philosophy of that team is phenomenal. And obviously the mentality to start the games and keep going like that. Yeah. But the amount of balls that they put in the box. The bodies they put in the box, it's not a fluke that you get the goals. This this just goes to show that if you've got a manager who demands that you work hard and has some real nice tactics and set pieces drilled into the team really, really well, you can get some fantastic results. So when you're talking about your Man Uniteds and your teams that flatter to deceive with all these massive megastar names, a manager should be demanding exactly what Thomas Frank does out of this Brentford team. The fact that they go and pump five goals past Wolves absolutely batter them as well. The tactic that they've got of scoring early early doors, it's not a fluke. It genuinely isn't a fluke. No. It's a tactic, right? They are playing for it. Like I say, the fact that Collins goes up there, you've got a big, massive centre-back in the box a minute and 16 seconds into the game just shows that they are playing for it. Possession of a sodden ball first. It's incredible, well, honestly. Uh, absolutely, so but good. I think so what will have done Gary O'Neill, and this is what... It is a philosophy from the kickoff. So Wolves always got back in the game. But they get back to two apiece and Brentford score within 30 seconds. Yeah. Why do they do that? Because from the kickoff, they played long, one second balls, and do what they've done in the last three games yeah. get a ball in the box and score. If I'm I mean, scoring from the kickoff again, it's basically. Scored from that, the kickoff yeah, again. It's brilliant. And I think that's what will really upset Gary. They'll set the team up. Look, we're not conceding early. But then, surely. You've seen for weeks upon weeks about how they swarm you after a kickoff. It doesn't matter whether it's the first kickoff of the game or when you've just equalised. They, they, they don't call front. them kickoffs, they call them set pieces. Yeah? Set piece. Kickoffs are set pieces. It's a very long set piece, and just things like that really irk you as a manager and a coach. Fuzzy, how's um, Ivan Tony getting on in Saudi? Uh, 21 in uh, three games now. He's I see. Yeah, 21 goals in three games. Okay. On fire, absolute fire. <laughs> uh, West Ham, um, Ipswich, um, what a, what a, what a, Ipswich at some point are going to have to look at themselves and say, we need to stop playing out from the back so dangerously because they got pumped 4 yeah. 1. It could have been 8 1. It genuinely yeah. could have been 8 1. There was a load of other ones where they're trying to play out, it's getting intercepted, it's getting caught out, and they are, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, look, it's a massive win for Lobotegu. Obviously, the West Ham fans demand a certain style of football. And Antonio said post the game, the change from last year is we've, or we're trying to become yep. a more possession-based team. And that takes time to evolve. Look, Moise's team were Moise's team and really a very successful team. But they've gone for a, a, a newer type brand, a sexier type brand, and it'll take time to evolve because the training routines, the drills will be so different and what it demands from the team. But they played excellent football. Did Ipswich play into their hands? Yes. I was very um, disappointed with um, the interview from McKenna post-game because West Ham could have had 10. Yeah. And he, he were quite disrespectful, I thought, in, in terms of saying they played long up to Socek, they played long up to Antonio. They didn't. Yes, of course, they've got that out ball. But they played football between the lines Bowen were on fire for the game. But if you're honest, Ipswich, what you alluded to, keep trying to force it through the lines. And teams have sniffed it now. It's and the enough. level's different. It's tough enough when you get promoted right into the Premier League to survive just by playing good, honest, hard football. But if you go and give away a couple goals every single game as well by doing silly things, you've got absolutely no chance whatsoever. Honestly, there was one, the third goal that West Ham scored, um, they played a, the defender played a high... You, you'd have loved that back honestly, pass, wouldn't you? Seriously. A high looping ball back to the goalkeeper, right? And Murich, I'm watching it thinking, Murich, mate, just back off, let the ball bounce so you can, like, it takes a bit of chest just off the ball. It. It takes a bit I'd of I'd have just booted it because of my touch, mate. And, 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 then, and then, boom, as far as you can, genuinely as far as you can, either in Rosette or whatever, just, but just get, he's tried to take a touch. It's a bad touch. He has to take a little tackle. So they get the ball out on the wing, cut it, cut goal. And I'm thinking, lads, that is just, that's it's suicide. Yeah, Genuinely, it's absolutely inviting suicide. so much pressure. And like 
that's the first time it's which have gone to obviously West Ham's new stadium and that, and they knew that that would have been yeah. very hot as soon as that game went back to one apiece. By the way, and we'll talk about Ariola in the goal because that should have never been a goal. It yeah. comes from a set piece. He steps inside, and to be fair, he just turns his right hand instead of just locking it, and it's a yeah, comfortable it save. Up. But he's looked look for a worldly save. But if that goal wouldn't have gone in, West Ham would have never felt any real pressure. But when they, they get the momentum, it's which at that point, they don't strike and think, right, let's keep the ball yeah. safe, though. Don't play anything. Don't invite the stuff onto them. But they couldn't deal with, actually, the, the, the quality of, actually, West Ham's attacking play. When they got the ball back off them, they were too good for them in the wider areas. Kudos and... Bowen were phenomenal on the day. I think yeah. he's up and running now, Lopetegui, do you think? Yeah, it's That'll massive. be the start yeah, of it massive. now. And... It's a massive. They, like, the home form for West Ham's always going to be big for them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a massive win because if they would have lost this game or not got three points from this game, again, going into the international break, so it's not a nice time for a manager under pressure. I promise you, this is when decisions get made. It's like, we've got two weeks until the next Premier League game. Do we do it now? Do we pull the trigger now? So we're getting a new manager in ASAP and he's got two weeks to work with the yeah. team. Um, so yeah, it's massive. Well, how many teams, if we're honest, do you think uh, at the board level are having them conversations? Certainly, um, West Ham would have had if they wouldn't yeah. have had that result. West yeah. Ham, Wolves, Southampton, Palace. 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 Oh. So you're talking three or four teams, and even though Lopetegu's won that game, it will still be a conversation because the possession-based football will take time, and one result shouldn't necessarily save you either. But he's a fantastic manager. And he'll get that team drilled and they will become a good team. But patience is very thin in football. But I would say there's three managers under big pressure in this break and it'll be Southampton, Wolves and Palace. Yeah. Um, Man City? Did you did you see the running race between Kyle Walker <laughs> and Adama Traore? The race that everybody wanted to see. We've been incredible. waiting and waiting for somebody to beat Kyle Walker. And it but happened. It happened. The power. It's just the it's it's just pure power. It's ridiculous, isn't it? You know, though, for a fact as well, that if them two are running against each other and the second they start to make a little bit of contact with each yeah. other as well, Traore is just brushing him off. He's knocking him off balance. He's setting him back there. He's sending him back a few paces, I guarantee. He's just so big and strong running. It's lovely. He's, I mean, to, to be fair, he didn't have... The, he's such a problem. Yeah. But yesterday, he's had three big chances. Yeah. He didn't quite... Get him away, but he, the thing is with him, he's creating the chances that other players wouldn't. Yeah. But you said, Watto, you kind of like tactically, um, they were really smart, weren't they? Yeah, I, I thought um, Silva set his team up back five, not normal. So he got he will be right wing back, and then obviously Trior is wide on one side of the four, and it, it, it's just isolating something in there. And I thought tactically they got the game. I mean, three massive, massive chances. Yeah. Massive. And even just take one, you know. Mate, when you're playing Man City, if you get a massive chance, you have to take it. If you want to try and get a point or a three points or anything, especially away at Man City, massive chances have to be converted. It's as simple as that. You can't get three in a game and expect to come away no, uh, with uh, anything if and, you don't take and it. And, like, the two one-on-ones he had, fair play to Edison. I mean, he, yeah, yeah, he stood really yeah, well yeah. When, when they'd had the foot race that we all wanted to see. But he never looked like he was scoring that no. one, did he? But when he were clean through in that first half, Edison obviously goes to his leg, but he manages to, to keep his legs to, to get the save. Yeah. So that were an important save. Um, but the cutback, I think he'd expect to score that one. Yeah, yeah. Probably, because sometimes the 1v1s, it, it's difficult. But look, Edison did really well. But they've scored two goals and missed three. Probably more chances, if I'm honest, because City got two or three blocks in. Yeah, It were a real performance from Fulham and I saw with Silva's interview after he was chuffed with what he'd done tactically and I think he was really chuffed with the performance of his team but they're just not Man City on the individual levels because he'd won the tactical battle that game he'd set them up they've scored two goals um, Traore's missed three massive chances and they've, had, and they've had other opportunities. And not only that as well, the goals that Man City have scored as well. So Kovacic is first deflected into the goal. Yeah. Leno's probably saving it. Doku's goal, Leno has to do better yeah. with it. Um, what I will say is that Man City's second goal, Kovacic's second goal, was just a thing of beauty. Yeah. Phil Foden down the left, ball to the back post, yeah. Bernardo Silva taking it down, put, cutting it back for him. The finish as well was The just, touch and finish. Oh, honestly, phenomenal. All of it was just so quick and ruthless. But if you, you've, you've made the point. If you're really honest there... Two goalkeeping errors. Yeah, I know. Potentially, 
and obviously lucky on the deflection, it's like the manager's like, yeah, I know. It's just worked against us there because I, I, I really like the the holy grails to try and beat Pep tactically in it, yeah. and, and he'd actually done it. Have, have um, they stumbled across something then? Because obviously City without Rodri, everybody knows it's not quite the same as what it normally is. Um, have Fulham and Silva stumbled upon a way of? combating Man City and, and attacking them because when you go away to Man City honestly mate I've been there where you're thinking just don't lose by six or seven keep it to four or five but to go there and actually have a chance at winning the game are other teams going to look at this and go yeah we, we're going to well, do the same thing for sure City the, the stats tell you they always score three goals at home how they scored three goals against Fulham God only knows but a lot of uh, teams clubs managers coaches get get this fixation that if I play a back three or back five it's defensive. Yeah. It doesn't need to be because when you spring and you can set traps because y- you allow them onto you because you're never going to defend high because Harlan can obviously run past you. Edison can play these long balls. So when they're in that mid to deep block and and you're you're comfortable there and they're playing all the passes, you know if you can win it there, you got a foot race to their goal and they set the traps, they nicked the ball, they did the bits they just couldn't convert, which obviously for the manager would have been frustrating. But tactically for him and his players gave him everything. I thought they were very unfortunate. And uh, Fossey, Haaland's having a, a drought, isn't he? Uh, two goals that game. Um, thankfully, Two though, goals without a game. T- two goals. Two you games without a goal. You, you're, you're nearly as bad as me. <laughs> Did you have a drink yet? <laughs> or not? Um, only one beer, that was it. Yeah, two games without a goal, yeah. Um, and you know what? Luckily for me, I didn't captain him in um, FPL in, in the two weeks. Kai Havertz. Of captain oh, Kai nice. Havers um, in the last two weeks, and he scored two goals as well, which brings us actually quite nicely onto um, well Arsenal versus Southampton. And I've got a question to start us off, lads. Can Kai Havertz score 20 goals in the Premier League? 20 Prem season? goals. Can he score 20 Premier League goals? He's got four so far in seven games. Can he score 20 goals this season? I'm going to say no. My honest answer would be no. Um, but the counter to that is he's playing in a team that creates lots and lots of chances. But I don't think he's a phenomenal goal scorer. I think it takes him a lot of chances. And maybe because Arsenal do create, he could have a chance. I don't think he's a 20-goal season man, though. He's a perfect player for Arsenal. Yeah. Like, is, yeah. Well, I think there was a few eyebrows raised when... He's been a very good sign. Yeah, and he has been a really, really good sign-in. And I actually, still do think, though, that if they had a ruthless one, if they had... Because I agree with you. It, for me, it's, it's four good chances to a goal. For Kai Havertz, that's how it feels to me. Every time I watch him, he has so many good chances, and he'll only ever put one of them away. I'm not sure. I, I think he. I think he has been more ruthless. I do think he's been more ruthless. But they, they score a lot of goals. Can we, we get some stats on the we, screen, please, and just see his chances, big chances. This yeah, season. we could do. I'm going to get bombed yeah, out. I just go back to last week as well. Who did they play last week? Uh, Leicester. Leicester. He had he had this like glaring header from like point blank range and he put it wide and I was thinking oh my gosh that has to be a goal it was a bit like Jota's yesterday against uh, Crystal Palace like you just put it in the back of the net that's all you need to do and I just think if they did have a killer an absolute killer then you could have a, a, an Arsenal striker they, scoring 25 score, 30 they season. score a lot of goals yeah they do score a lot and of they goals. mix uh, it up nicely don't they they fact. do yeah that would be that would be my kind of caveat is that they, they're not like a, a, a city where yeah. Arlen don't score but everything tends to go through him in terms of goal scoring whereas yeah. Arsenal last season scored 90 something goals. Yep. They've got multiple players scoring, you know, 10 plus goals. So I don't know. Yeah, I think I, it's I, just the system that works for I them. I just think they're a team that needs a lot of goal scorers. I don't think they're reliant on that one man one big 20. Boy. I think it's a real accumulation from various areas because of the way they play and the interaction of positions. And, and they are a very, very attacking team. It would be great if they had a one man who was going to get them 20 or 30 goals. For sure, that makes a difference. But I think they'll all pop up this year with 10, 12, 15. Yeah, they I will, think yeah. that's where yeah, they'll yeah, get yeah. to, to be honest. I think when you've got, to be fair, when you've got Saka on that right wing and he cuts inside, as soon as he cuts inside, right, a, a quick quick message for any opposition playing against Arsenal, right? Do not let Bukayo Saka cut inside. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Easier said than done, though, mate. I mean, uh, some of the stuff he would when do. You're, when you are, uh, you know. we're, we're going to ask a question in a minute, it, uh, well, is he world-class? But when you are, what he is world-class at, I will tell you this, is when he cuts inside, is that whip shot cross, right? When he whips it into that back post area and it's a cross that about five people could header, including their defenders, 
and the goalkeeper can't come for it because he's asked to wait and he has to wait. Oh, and then somebody at the last po back post, Martinelli, for example, at the weekend, goes and just puts it in. They are impossible to defend against. It's asking for an own goal and it's asking for a tap-in and the goalie is just caught in the middle of it going, oh, this is just disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. Is Bukayo Saka world-class? Yes, yes, he is. He's, he's a, a standout performer in that like position. I, I, I think the only way to stop him, yeah, I mean, it's easy to say, don't come inside, but I saw him facing a couple of them 1v1 and they are giving him it a little bit but he moves down the line and just manipulates it back like, so quick. Yeah, like and then he's got your whole back four running, as you said, oh, for the Martin any goal. They're all running towards Ramsdale. And he's looking at his own place thinking, oh, shit, yeah. I can't help you here. <laughs> and, I mean, you've got your overload at the back post. I mean, he's got no chance to try and nope. stop that. I mean, it looks awful, but it's milliseconds to, to deal with it. I just thought Southampton, like, they got in at half time. And, yes, they've been low block and... Arsenal are huffing and puffing, but they defended it. They'd not had massive chances. They'd had all the possession and everything. And then they get in front, and yet that's what Southampton do. 1-0 up, two minutes later, a shitty square pass. Don't do it there. All of a sudden, they fire it into Havertz, and I think this is the modern goalkeeping. It's so hard. Ramsdale semi-high because you've got good possession of the ball. Square pass beat. He's having to back off, back off. He gets to six yards. Just as Abbott beats the defender, he knows he's high. Gets back to four. And he's still too high. And Abbott's thumped it. And it's passed him and in off the post. He's not stopping it, even if he's in the perfect position. But backing off, backing off, you never fully get set. And it was just stupid at that point. Arsenal are one nil. When you're driving forward, don't play it square. Play it forward, in beyond them, and get yourself up. Uh, not only that, when you've scored away at the Emirates, just try and settle it down for 10 minutes, yeah? yeah? yeah. Just yeah. just keep it at that for 10 minutes, yeah? And then you can all find your way into it. But if Arsenal scores quickly like they do, they are on the front foot from that moment on. They're just going to keep flying forward. Quickly, though, lads, before we move on, uh, Bukayo Saka, world-class? Um, I think he's got world-class ability, but he's got to take Arsenal to a league, um, uh, win something with England. I think he's got to... I think world-class is banded around too quickly these days. I think he can get there, but at the moment, he's got to take Arsenal to the title. Um, can you get off the scent, fence, please, and no. take those splinters out your arsehole? Not yet. Yes or no? Not yet. No? No, not yet. Demi? Yes. Oh! Whoa! The Luke quiz master! Come Luke on! Yeah. 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 Um, Any? I am going to say stats. What do you think, Ned? Yeah? You think yes as well. Ned, stop it. Stop being a weirdo. Ned. He can hear a dog that, downstairs. That would, that would have been yes. He can hear a dog downstairs and he's giving it the big one. He would batter you, Ned, honestly. The dog downstairs would batter you. So um, what do you think? I think um, stats, yes. His stats are world class. Um, his goals and assists. I think his all-round play needs to be improved, so I'm not going to say yes just yet. He can get there. He can get there. Oh, he's, he's very, very, very close. He's well on his way. Uh, very much well on his way. Um, go on then, Stamford Bridge, Chelsea. Um, Chelsea are a little bit um, indifferent. Is that the word? No, do you know what? I think it is. He's probably... When Liverpool got beat by Forrest, everyone's saying it was yeah. a slip. Yeah, good Obviously, job. Forrest going to Chelsea and there. Are they indifferent? Forrest are a decent football team and, yep. and a draw is not ideal for Chelsea, but it's certainly not the end of the world, is it, Watto? No, I, I thought it was a really good football match and Forrest have been a phenomenal team this year. But you go back to last week, like Fulham beating them at Forrest, phenomenal Fulham, silver, like we've just alluded to in the performance at Man City. But Forrest are a proper team. Uh, I thought it was a, a really, really good game of football. In the end, both goalies were phenomenal. Oh, Both teams wanting to win it at the end, even though Forrest were down to 10 men, it was a game of ping pong. It's crazy that Prousey, obviously I worked with him at Southampton, he had a red card at Chelsea a few years ago. And then unfortunately for him, it looks like Stamford's Bridge is the red card area. <laughs> that slip, it. weren't it, Watto? Just a slip. Well, it was a bit like Gerard won it. And yeah. if Gerard had done the same thing, everybody would say, well, maybe Liverpool would have won the title maybe. and all these things. But yeah, he knows it's a red and he had to take one for the team. But I was talking to Luke uh, as that happened, and I thought Nuno, everybody would have said it were really negative. Texas centre forward off the go five, four, nothing, if you like, yeah. really deep. But they were all sprinters. Yeah. So when they got it, a bit like what Silva did on transition, because Chelsea felt with, against 10 men, we've got to come, we've got to come, we've got to come. And it's a real tight defensive 5 4 in front of the goalie. When they won it, they've got a foot race. 
And it became crazy, the ping pong at the end. And the goalies were phenomenal. Of course, Chelsea would be disappointed with 10 men, but they could have easily lost it. Yeah. Sanchez made an unbelievable save. The stats, the stats in this game are brilliant. Um, I think Forrest had nine shots on target. Chelsea had eight shots on target. Um, but for a team like Forrest to go 5-4-0, and then when they win back or win the ball back, every one of them goes, that's good coaching, that is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody's on the same page of, when we get the ball back, that's our only chance, lads. Everybody commits and goes. And if, we, if we've got players behind you backing it up, we've got a chance of scoring a goal. It's when you've got players doing stuff individually, that's when it's not good coaching because that hasn't really been drilled. But I like it from Nuno. It's, it's very good to go away to Chelsea and come away with a draw. And even then, even then, looking at it with 10 men going, God, we could have won that. God, yeah, mate, won there'd that. have been a slight element, a disappointment. Yeah, we could have won that. It, it, oh. I mean, as I said, it were crazy, but a proper watch. And it were nice to see that the 5 4 nothing down to 10 men doesn't necessarily mean... I'm sitting here for 10, 15 minutes hanging on for a point. Do you know what? Yeah. Come on, come on to us. We, we'll accept that. A bit of needle as well. A little bit of scuffle at the side of the pitch. Cole Palmer, did you see him just going to sit down as well? Just, I ain't interested in any mate, of this. I just, I just want to sit down and He's go, a cool yeah, character. I don't want he? any of this. Did, mate, that almost goal that he scored, well, that Sales made a decent save, where he's nicked it round the defender. There are not many players in the oh. Premier League that can do that. It was a bit bird campy, wasn't it? It, it was, a bit, it was bird. more than a bit bird campy. Yeah. It reminded me of that. And to be fair, it's a great save. The second save, he's obviously worked well to get up and save it. But the first action... Phew. Is Cole Palmer world class? Yes. It's the same as Saka. Cole, he's to drag them to things. Cole Palmer's world class. He's got world class ability. <laughs> Cole Palmer is world class. It's, it's, it's is. not just a yes and no. Man. It is. It world is. class is thrown around nah, so often. This kid here, this kid has got no fear. No, he just goes out on the pitch and has a nice time. He don't care about anything, mate. He just wants to win and score. I wouldn't be surprised. And I know we spoke about it. I think a few weeks ago that obviously Chelsea have paid fifty million for him. He's on this nine-year contract or whatever. But I wouldn't be surprised if. A city or somebody tried. I mean, there's probably a clause. The only team that can get him is probably City. There's yeah. something already in there because he can go to City yeah. and then he would be winning the. It'd be interesting to know if there is something in the depths of the contract. I would have. Buyback. I would have thought that in a deal like that, City, in terms of the hierarchy, are not stupid. But Pep knew he were, were a talent. I mean, you're still selling him for fifty million. You're like, and if he can flourish, there the must be. There must be. All right, lads, on to uh, Crystal Palace, the Saturday morning game. Liverpool ended up winning the game 1-0. Um, Palace actually had some chances in the end, but Liverpool should have been out of sight, lads. They should have been out. They absolutely battered them. I was watching them, should have been four or five at half-time. It didn't. Alisson went and get an, gets an injury late on, and, and Palace were knocking on the door. Um, but two goals conceded now for Liverpool all season long. Mate, are they going to be there at the end of the season? They, are, they, are, they have to be. I mean... It tells you everything. I, if I'm, I have to be honest. I mean, a phenomenal result for Liverpool because Palace, historically, a real yeah. tough place for for anybody to go. To be honest with you, but I was really disappointed with Palace. Yeah. It were a a, a, a passive. But for about seventy minutes, seventy five minutes probably, maybe even eighty actually, they were just they were nowhere near it. No, it just passive, it. real passive display and. Playing at Sellers Park doesn't warrant that from a, yeah, a Palace yeah. team. And look, Glasner did so, so well at the end of last season. But the reality is football managers don't get much time. No wins so far. And even though it looks all right, that really wasn't an all right performance. No, it wasn't, was it? They were they were absolutely miles off it, especially at home as well. Palace is such a tough place to go, yeah. isn't it, historically? Yeah. The, like those Palace ultras that sit behind the yeah, goal. Yeah. They make so much noise, mate. It's such a volatile atmosphere. Everyone says it's it the same thing. Honestly, it's a really horrible place to go. Kind of, yeah, really, yeah. really what tough place to go. What about the Gahey Pen VVD? Because the way I kind of saw it is that VVD's a wily old boy, isn't he? Yeah. And he just did enough yeah. to, to stop it. And it wasn't quite enough for a penalty. Yeah, it's a subjective one again, isn't it? Whereas if the referee would have given it on pitch there and then, yeah. they would have probably kept with it. They, they I wouldn't have overturned What do it. you make of it? Yeah, I, I don't think it was a penalty. I think the last couple of weeks have shown us that that sort of penalty is not going to be given. 
So anybody kind of holding or kind of do it, they're not giving them any. What about James Tarkovsky? That was definitely a penalty. That was ridiculous. That was WWE. <laughs> That's what you saw yesterday. Tombstone. NFL, yeah. Oh, yeah. NFL. I thought he was that like was, some kind of that, defensive That was then. ridiculous. We'll talk about that in a minute. That was absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I asked the question at the beginning. But genuinely, Liverpool, end of the season, are they going to be there or thereabouts? I think, I think they'll be up there. I think this could be a, a big one, though. McAllister, obviously. And Alisson, look. He's he's in the top three goalies in the yeah. league, isn't he? If he's out, I think he's going to be out for a little while. That injury, that injury looked good hamstringing. That could be a tear. Could it, it could be a grade two tear, which is best part of a month. Don't get me wrong. If, he's, if, if he's lucky, he's, if he's lucky, he's fair. He's fairly lucky. The fact that it's international break now, so he's got two weeks written off straight away there. Um, but yeah, it looks like it could be a sort of like four to six weeker that does without being sort of medically. But seeing enough of those injuries during my time, it's normally about six weeks. Um, obviously, Kelleher not involved. So um, Vitislav Jaros came on. Um, he had one save to make Watto. He saved it. And he saved it. He <laughs> kind of got away with it a little uh, bit, didn't he? He got a little bit excited, tried to read the shot, kind of moving across his goal and managed to sort of like just claw it back in. But... Um, that would have been good for his confidence because Kelleher's not going to be fit for in a couple of weeks' time. Then um, he needs to be up to speed pretty yeah, quickly. I, I don't think Allison will play before the, the next international. No chance. No that, that's that's my take yeah, on it. No chance. And the, the record they've got conceding only two all season. Look, they've got top players in front of him, but he's a top top goalie and makes big big one on one saves. So it could be a loss, but I think this, the the team's solid and the attacking flair they've got. But I would be more concerned. On Palace's showing on that game. Yeah, to be honest with you, Leicester Bournemouth. Oh, Leicester Mate, Bournemouth. This young Buonanotte. Oh. He reminds me of a young Philip Coutinho. I like it. <laughs> Mate, he's what nineteen. Yeah, he's on loan from Brighton. Another Brighton player. He goes to say about. more about Brighton than blooming incredible, else, doesn't it? Incredible. He looks some player. Some player. Um, lovely, lovely goal. Lovely finish. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a massive win for Leicester. This is a massive win for Leicester. We had um, Mads Hermanson on the podcast, didn't we? In the week, I played a round of golf with him. Um, he's a 24 years old, Watto. Honestly, he is the loveliest lad, isn't he? Yeah. Like real Danish, grown up, sort of like smart, smart talk. Just a real lovely, lovely lad. And we were actually talking about this game here. He was saying Bournemouth, you know, they're a good team. I was like, yeah, they're a good team, mate. At home, Bournemouth are a very good team at home. So away from home, not quite as much. I reckon this is a big chance for you. And so, yeah, to get the win, clean sheet as well is... Um, he'll be relieved, won't he, Steve Cooper? You're going into the break yeah, and he'll sure. be relieved because they, they did ride their luck a little bit. Yeah, I, I think Bournemouth are a very good team. I mean, on the Monday night football against Southampton, it went against boys, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, they, they are phenomenal at home. But I think the way that they play away from home, he's set them up. Good, and... and to be fair to Steve Cooper, he said after the game, like, you've got to be full on and have a bit of luck to, to get anything out of a Premier League game. Yeah. Yeah. And look, that that, that were massive. The, that first win for any team is huge. And to win it, for the goalie to get a clean sheet, it really builds some confidence. Look, Bournemouth, I think they'll be a bit like Fulham flying home, thinking, how has how that? Have, yeah. how, how have we not got something from the game? Created a lot of chances... Um, for sure, and they've been very, very unfortunate. But I think for Leicester, it will give them some growing belief and a bit of momentum because as that promoted team now, you you, you kind of at the bottom three. You've had your win. It's a clean sheet. There's so many positives to take forward. Yeah, these are the games. This is how Leicester survive this season. This is is beating the likes of your Bournemouths and those sort of teams in and around there because, you know, realistically, they're not going to go away to your cities and your Liverpools and your Tottenhams and get results, are they? They're saying that they actually did get a result against Spurs, didn't they? <laughs> did, yeah. Which was a miracle because they got absolutely pumped. Um, but yeah, this is this is massive. Like just for confidence wise, going into the international break as well, you've got two weeks now to sort of ponder on it and think, buzzing, come on, let's take this confidence, this momentum and take it into the next game as well. All right, okay, we've got the quiz coming up. Very soon, very quickly. Everton Newcastle. Anthony Gordon Newcastle. was a bit of a day to forget, wasn't it? Um I've got a question for you, Watto. Anthony Gordon, obviously, boyhood Everton fan, came through the Academy system there. He's the one that gets given the responsibility to take the penalty. Um obviously he scored last week, but do you think he should still be given that responsibility? Do you, do you not think that's a lot of pressure on, on young shoulders? I thought it was massive pressure. And the way he left the club, it's his club. He's gone to Newcastle. You know, the, the Goodison Park, you know, the Everton faithful. 
Cool. They're not that forgiving, other. No. You know, and and it were a big get, a big day for him and his family. To be fair, they're all there. And we spoke last week. We gave him all the credit in the world. He spoke about the philosophy for taking penalties, this England mentality. But it just goes to show you penalty taking and the moment and the occasion and what it is, it creates something different. I think they should have probably said to somebody else, take it. But you could see, like... <sighs> yeah. That's, 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 that's before that's even the process the ball thing, down. isn't it? Yeah, but... But, come it, on. Watto, I understand what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, Fozzie, but this this isn't an, an 18-year-old. This is a marquee sign in, what was he, 40-odd million. He's leading the line. He's the man without Isaac and Wilson. If he's not taking a penalty there, then then he's, he's the main guy. Yeah, and I, I just think... I think there's certain times, though, where it's just a little bit too much. And he is still young. You've got to think, taking a penalty away at Everton with all those fans baying for blood behind the goal, they're absolutely getting in his head. They're giving him all sorts of stick. They would have given him all sticks all in the build-up to the game, all throughout the warm-up, all throughout the game. I think sometimes, as a manager or even some of the experienced players alongside him at Newcastle, maybe go, you know what? Let's not let him take the penalty today. Let's let's just make a point of it being somebody else. But another reason I would say is, and you'll know this when you face somebody who you've faced at your team or in international training so, many so many times. Yeah. I, I I think that has a bearing yeah, on it. So yeah, it's yeah. not the fact that, yeah, of course, it's a massive thing. He's come through the ranks. He was an Everton man, and they're at him like for for leaving the beloved club. But then to face the goalie yeah, who you've yeah, yeah. faced every day in training when it were your old club. You've done all this penalty work with the national team. He's probably the one goalie. Yeah. You're thinking, and and it's got a conversation pre-game with the staff at New. Uh, he obviously wanted to score against Everton, sure, but like I thought the moment just got. To I did. I think it was a poor penalty. It was a poor penalty. And Pickford went very very early. early. It, was yeah. a, it was a comfortable save in the end. Um, a couple of uh, um, um, penalty. Let's talk about the penalties actually, because the Tarkovsky one that he. <laughs> Yeah. Was just ridiculous. I, mean, I just like, he's just he's just grabbed him, slammed him, Russia blood to grabbed the head, him, slammed it? him. The most obvious, pe- and he's actually even afterwards gone. What are you on about? No way! Like <laughs> the most obvious penalty ever. Um, and then there was a penalty shout late on as well. Um, Dan Byrne, kind of tangle of legs with Dominic Calvert Lewin. What were your thoughts on it? No, I, I think it can go to VR, whatever. It was it was never a penalty, and that's what it's all yeah. designed for, isn't it? You know what I mean? Uh, in in all fairness. The ref made a good decision on the day, and it, it's Byrne that gets fouled. Yeah. Um, it were a good save, he, and then Byrne gets up to be in a good position, tangling her legs for yeah. sure, but it were the defender had no liability in that action, and clearly no penalty. I thought Dice, you were clutching at straws a little bit Without post-game. Without doubt he was, yeah. He's, he's it was desperate a bit for half-hearted, the... wasn't it, ah, Dice? Sure. Wasn't there's, it? A, yeah. there's a bit of cheek. Got a bit, he, yeah. He's desperate for the refs to, to give him a penalty, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I, I agree with you, though. I, I think first glance, I'm like, oh, you never... I need to see a little bit slow down, but then we do see it down. It's very obvious that Burns done really well, actually, to get in front of him. Yeah, fantastic. So once you get your body in front of him or your legs in front of somebody, then you have, it's going to go in your favour, thankfully. And Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think it was a penalty. Right, we're going to go to the quiz now because we've got a very, very special... Foscast guest coming in very shortly. Yeah, super Tyrone Mings. Yeah. Big Tyrone Mings. He's had 14 months out injured, lads. He played his first bit of competitive football on Saturday morning for the 21s. Um, and he's coming in to do a Foscast, so it's good timing. Um, so I'm going to take a big W, a big win from this quiz into no, the not, other room in a minute. Don't let him not... Not bullying not me today, today, mate. Come on, Jamie, let's I'm go. I'm feeling it. Quiz I'm feeling time. It. If Jim and he's at it, I'm going to be at it. Come on then, Jiminy, let's go. Right. Ten. Ten questions, including tiebreaker. Question one. Which Uruguayan legend with 120... Suarez. No. Which Uruguayan... Edson Cavani. No. Well, I'll take your time on this Th- one. Th- thank you. Which How Uruguayan, many Uruguayans legend is it? with 112 caps signed for United in 2002 for two seasons? Tevez. No, you're all back in. Juan Sebastian Verón. No. He's Argentinian. He is Argentinian. <laughs> Say that again. What was the question? Which Uruguayan legend with 112 caps... Diego signed... Forlan. Diego Forlan is the correct oh, answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Ned. Me and you, boy. Yeah. 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 Question two. Right. Come on. Pizzagate in 2004 is between... Which... Arsenal, Arsenal, Man United. United. It was Tom. 2 0 Tom. Is that the question? Yeah, it is. Well, you should be a specific player. It I got asked. Fabregas. Fabregas. The answer to that question, whatever it hey. should be, it should have been Fabregas. Well, 
Come on. Maybe that's next week. Don't be so loser. <laughs> Did you actually utter any syllable there? No, because I was going to jump in and I was going to say, no, it's Fabregas. Oh, okay. okay. Question three. Who were Chelsea playing against in the Premier League in 1997 when they forgot their away kit? So they had to Bolton, win. Coventry. Oh, for... oh my God, Tom. Oh, I, didn't even, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know it was a thing. Do you, know, do you know why I said Bolton? Because but just before I joined Birmingham, they forgot their away kit and that were Bolton. Ah, I'm going to controversially say this. I think that's been a question before. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. I've never heard it, it, was, it was the colour of the kits. I think it might have been in the Sisters quiz one year. <sighs> anyway, well, anyway, anyway you, got, you got, yeah, mate. Thank oh, my God. That's a good start, this, mate, isn't it? Yes. Um, on. This is going to be like Brighton against Tottenham. Question four. Paolo Di Canio got sent off for pushing a Check referee. No, incorrect. Paul Alcock. No, incorrect. <laughs> Take your time again, what's up? I know, but I failed first. <laughs> I, 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 failed, I failed They're first They're both time. sort of correct, but in the wrong yeah. way. Like, <laughs> All right, come on. Paolo Di Canio got sent off for pushing a referee to the floor during a game versus Arsenal in 1998. But how long was his ban? Um, 12 weeks. No. Are we all back no. In? No. Are we back in? Yeah. Eight Eleven weeks. Eleven games. Eleven games is the correct answer. Oh my god! You've uh, this, 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 this summer not right here. He's, he's picking questions <laughs> that are my prime geek Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. No complaints yeah. about the questions this week. He's got all not four. Not, <laughs> he's got all four eight straight off the bat here. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Mate, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. Tyrone Mings downstairs. Question five. I have played for Monaco B, Monaco, Juventus, Arsenal, Barcelona, New York Red Bulls, Fabregas, Thierry, Thierry Henry. Good night, lads. Is that five nil? Yeah. Five nil. Oh, my God. Question six. Which player did Luis Suarez bite in the Premier League? Ivanovic. See Ivanovic. <laughs> six <laughs> nil. <laughs> This is the way. Ned, no, we, 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 we could get our first Ned. 10 nil. Thank you, Ned. Come again next week. Cheers, Jimmy. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm very rarely. What? I'm very rarely well, you know struck for words there, guys. But next week, you know. <laughs> no, we're gonna have to go because our guest has just arrived. So. Oh my god. Well done, Tom. I can't even say well done, Tom. I don't know where that's come from. Should Mate, we give that... the audience the other questions? Yeah. Of the, yeah? Question great. seven. Which former Manchester City goalkeeper played outfield as striker in 2005? David James. David James is the correct answer. He came on for John Macken. Mate, you might get all 10 questions in. On question eight, Thierry Henry and what other player in 2005 was involved in missing the penalty Robert versus Pires. Manchester City? <laughs> wow. Ben's, question... gone to get, Ben's gone to get Tyrone, yeah. by the way. Question nine. When Manchester City won the treble in, 20, in the 2022 and 2023 season... Which team knocked them out of the League Cup, crushing their chances for the quadruple? Wigan. No. 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 Um, Southampton. Southampton's the correct answer. They lost 2 0. Question 10. Mate, we can't relive that. In 2005, which team was the first team to survive in the Premier League after being bottom West at Brom. Christmas? West Brom. Nine, nine out of 10, though, mate. And tiebreaker question. <laughs> Harry Redknapp has retired from management, but what club did he end up retiring at? Birmingham. Birmingham is the correct answer. Well, there well, we go. Tom, nine's never going to be beat. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be beat. I'm over the moon. Mate, it, that, it's, a, it's, it's a phenomenal perform, performance, isn't it? I yeah. mean, you, can't, you can argue about certain things, but that, you can't. You can't, can't argue. Well, yeah, that was the Football Filling Quiz, and uh, see you all next week. <laughs>